All right. Hello, Home Service Pros. Welcome to the Battle Plan Marketing Podcast, episode number 67. Today, we have a special guest on the show, Mr. Brooks Pettis, Chief Operating Officer of House Call Pro, which is the leading software app for home service companies to improve scheduling, dispatch, invoicing, payment collections, and more. Brooks has over two decades of developing successful teams around the world and then found his life's passion helping service pros with House Call Pro. Brooks' superpower is scaling customer acquisition and operational excellence. He's all about building leaders and teams that deliver a superior customer experience. And you will clearly see in our conversation that he's incredibly passionate about helping home service pros become more efficient, scalable, and profitable. I'm sure you get lots of value and insights from his many great comments. I really enjoyed my conversation with him. I'm sure you will too. Let's get to it. Welcome to the Battle Plan Marketing Podcast for Contractors. Get actionable advice and tactics on how to grow your home service company, plus interviews with industry experts dropping value bombs in marketing, sales, and operations. And now, let's power up your home service biz with your host, Mark Ambrose of Battle Plan Marketing. Welcome to the podcast, Brooks. Thank you, Mark. Great to be here. I appreciate you all asking us to participate. We appreciate you taking the time to come on the show and sharing your expertise with the audience today. So let's dive right in. So tell us what you guys do, where you do it, who your ideal customer is, and how you help them out. Sounds good. So House Call Pro has been around about seven years or so out there selling software to service professionals, primarily residential, but usually they do some commercial as well. So they're doing a job in the home. We want to give them an operating system to help them run the business. And when we say that, that's kind of a fancy way of saying it, but what we really want is help our pros succeed around the things that are not necessarily inclined to do well early on in their career and they get better at later on. What I mean by that is, look, the pros are good at turning the wrench. If you're an HVAC, plumbing, electrical. If you're in home cleaning to carpet cleaning to window cleaning, you probably built a business and some level of success by just doing the work at some level of quality. The next step you figure out typically is that if I obsess around that customer care, I really take care of my customer, do whatever it takes for them to have that five-star experience. And I can build a business around that. When you start to get that money coming in though, you got to figure out, oh my God, I'm burning up so much time. I'm working 12 hours a day six, seven days a week. I can't see my kids go play softball. I can never take a vacation. Is there something that can make my time more efficient? And look, also, by the way, grow as well. And so what we've done, we've built software that does a lot of that fundamental work of running the business, the system for the business. So on that front, what House Call Pro does ostensibly is we help our pros schedule and dispatch trucks. We help them communicate with their customers in a way that's intuitive so that you know Mrs. Pettis, my wife, feels really safe and secure in her home. Why? Because Mark's HVAC is sending her on my way communications. Here's the protocols of our safety of what we're doing on terms of how an estimate will come to you. Here's how you can pay with your credit cards to get those Southwest points if you want to, Mrs. Pettis. <laughs> All those customer communications end up being wins for their customers and how they communicate with them, how they serve that customer. So they can schedule, they can dispatch, they can do estimates, they can do invoices, and they can get paid, and they can manage their reviews and reputation which is everything kind of the backbone of running the business day to day and all that integrates with QuickBooks so they can run their accounting through it too. So those are the things they often do, but they don't really have systems for it yet. We want to make it just drop dead simple for that pro, that service professional to be successful in the thing that may not be as natural to them as it is doing the work itself. So that's the complement of what we offer to the customer. And in those seven years, I joined the business about five years ago. We are really, really blessed to have these incredible founders, all of whom were technical. They came out of Qualcomm. They were unbelievable building software, particularly mobile devices, which is where the world's gone. I see. And then chairman of our company is someone I'd worked with over a few different companies. And, you know, he's a wonder kind of building great businesses in this space, notably. And he matched us up to say, hey, Brooks can be good at building systems for acquiring customers and serving those customers. We have this incredible product. Why don't you guys all work together? And sure enough, we've done that the last five years. And we've had this unbelievable ride in that time frame from being a very small company of 60 people to being close to 800 employees around the world at this point, growing like wildfire. Wow. And we've been working organically. We've just been incredibly blessed. And it's just that partnership of obsession around mission. So we're in the software business, but we're really in 
is in the business of helping pros succeed. We help them go from good to great. We help those pros take care of their families, take care of their employees, be a part of their community by helping them save time and growing their business systematically. And when you can have that kind of mission and wake up every day with hundreds of employees in service to the class of people, the pros that are out there in the U.S., man, I'd say it's a remarkable business. And again, we've been lucky and we also work really hard in service to that mission and it's really worked for us over time. So that's the backbone of what we do software to help these pros run their businesses. And then if I think about where we came from and where we're going, Mark, it is when the founder started this company, it was for the owner operator. Guys like Ian, Ian's our, one of the co-founders and was a CEO when I started and the president of the company and drives innovation today. He built the company to solve for his dad, Butch. His dad, Butch was a painter, owner operator, I see. took care of his family all his life. Unbelievable. I mean, Butch is a phenomenal human and just really interesting guy. Just hard work as they all get out. And he said, hey, man, we could build software to help people like Butch. It was really about that owner operator we began. The phenomenon of our business in the last year or two has been as adoption of software has grown in the home services sector, the companies are getting bigger that want us to work with them. And so we keep serving and thriving around the owner operator. And think about of the 22,000 companies, 22,000 companies that are subscribed to House Call Pro today. Wow. The vast majority are in that kind of one to two person, one to four person company shop. Okay. What we keep seeing are these five to 10, 10 to 20 person companies are now coming to us and saying, hey, we need software. We're a little more sophisticated how we operate these businesses. We need that software to do some more beyond that basic. We need to have it's really robust reporting. We need to have sales tools. We need to have marketing tools. We need to have X, Y, Z. So our business has has grown. Demand of the marketplace has focused on the base of these one to two, one to four person shops. Now we're building these set of features that really help those mid-sized companies thrive as well. And so our business has grown. We're able to keep investing in that business. I mean, I think I mentioned this to you somewhere in a note, but we've quadrupled the size of our engineering team in just the last year alone. I mean, we're software guys and we've made that team four times what it used to be. Wow. We'll be at close to 200 product and engineers here shortly. Why? Because there's so much opportunity to build software and support that helps these pros do what I said earlier, right? So they can grow, take care of their families, all the things they want to do. Become more efficient. So it's been a remarkable story and we've been on quite a run and we just feel like that's what I can use is we've been really blessed to partner with all these pros at this level of scale. That's some serious growth out there, Brooke. And we're going to call yourself a CRM, right? Customer Relationship Management. We're throwing out a little. Yeah, you know, it, it, CRM is a general term. It is. A lot of times I'll think about CRM as like what Salesforce does and think about a sales motion. Some people will take that a step further, which is the customer relationship management component of it. We just think we're more of an operating system for helping these pros run their business outside of what they, yeah, they do best. Schedule, dispatch, estimates, invoicing, getting paid, you know, the fintech component of this thing, which is to help them get paid by credit card. I'll tell you what, my wife doesn't even know where her checkbook is. No idea. Like, I never see it to begin with. She doesn't know where it is. And my kids have never heard of what a checkbook is. So <laughs> right. the world of payments and convenience is about credit card payment or consumer financing. And so for us, the founders were smart enough. They're smart fellows. They were smart enough to say software that helps them run their business. And we need to have a way to help them collect payments to help them grow that business as well. Let's make it convenient for all their customers to be able to pay the way they want to. So for us, the software component of it and letting that customer pay the way they want to. Now, my wife loves to get Southwest points. It's her way of earning our way to Hawaii to go on vacation. It's her way of contributing on that front. And so she loves those points. And the pros can make it easy for the consumer to pay the way they want to. Their businesses tend to grow and they tend to get those repeat customers. So early on, we built that operating system and then we put that layer of enable payments as well. And it's been a big boom for us. Nice. And so it sounded like you integrate financing as well. We do. We have consumer financing as of about a year ago. We now, so those bigger jobs, look, if you're putting in a new HVAC unit for a larger home, that might be a ten to $14,000 ticket. And there aren't a lot of people that want to either stroke a check or even put on a credit card. And so they probably want financing. And so we realize that there, because HVAC is such a big part of our business, HVAC, plumbing, electrical are the top three categories in our business today, along with carpet cleaning, home cleaning, window cleaning, like again, the kind of cleaning world. And then you have the mechanical world. Okay. Those mechanical tickets get big. And as a result, you got to offer different ways for the consumer to pay so that our pros can win more of those jobs and really provide the right solution for their customer. Gotcha. Are they able to plug in a third-party financing, Green Sky or Interbank or something like that? Or 
They can. Yeah, there's always the other option. They can pay other ways. It may not be as seamlessly integrated as it would be with the offerings that we have. But by all means, we want the pros to succeed however they can succeed. We try to give them what we think is the best integrated option, yet we certainly allow them to bring in other options if they prefer that. I see. But you also bring some third-party financing plans to the table for the pro if they want it. We do. We create our own partnerships on that front so that we can prefer a consumer lending option or they can use the other bin if they want to and bring their own outside in. Because we can put a lot of our offerings in the customer flow of pre-qualification at the proposal, sales proposal level, at the invoicing level, Nice. our offerings, and they're incredibly, like really compelling offerings because the partners that we've chosen And with that seamless integration, ultimately, we think it makes for a great experience for the pro and more importantly, for the pro to look good in front of their customer, yet they can always bring their own options to the table if they so choose. That's fantastic. A lot of pros that we speak to on the smaller ones don't have financing yet. I don't know what the mix is, 50-50, some have it, some don't. So it's a magic pill. Once they get that, they open up the repipes, the water filtration system, HVAC, like you're saying, all those bigger ticket items, they become doable now. Yeah. It's a sophisticated idea. I don't want to go too far down this rabbit hole, but consumer financing is a little daunting for a lot of pros to get their head around as small business operators. Yet, we have a really good educational training program explain them how to be successful using it. And the question is, why would they want to learn this new skill of selling with consumer financing as an option? Well, the answer is, the best thing you do to a customer when you're selling a bigger ticket is good, better, better, best. Present four options to Mrs. Pettis, explain the benefits of each, and then layer in consumer financing to help win that deal. And so the pro benefits by winning more deals and having a better presentation and just giving more options to their customers. So it's a win for the customer. It's a really big win for the pro because they can build those options in and they can win more deals at the appropriate ticket size. Absolutely. And so it's a no-brainer. You just got to get your head around how to do it. And what we learn in our business is that pro may not know how to do it yet. Yet if we slow down, give them an intuitive product, and coach them, and support them, and meet them where they are when they put their hand up for help, if we provide all those support pieces to go with the learning the new idea, the new feature, the new service, we get them from where they want to go, from good to great, and ends up working out pretty well. But you can't just ship it and pray. You got to actually ship the feature and the opportunity and then have the educational components, the support components to go with it. Absolutely. And look, you know, Mark, because we're so community-centric as an organization, we obsess around this mission for the pro. We obsess around service to them. Well, how does that manifest itself? It manifests itself in our community. Like If you look at our reputation, we rightfully so get a lot of credit for being in service to the pro community and building that community along with them. And if you look at our Facebook, we have 20,000 plus pros in our Facebook community now. Yeah, That thing is just unbelievable from a consulting peer-to-peer perspective. It's crazy. And we decided to invest in that early on because we wanted our pros to win. People like Ian's dad, Butch, we wanted him to succeed. One of the best ways for Butch to succeed is he can go talk to Joe and go talk to Ann. We're doing the same thing as him, using a system like House Call Pro and figure out how to help one another. Like, it isn't just us. Tell them how. They help one another. You put a thread up and say, how do I do X? You're going to get 100 answers in a couple of hours. It's insane. So we love it. And we love community. We love support. We see it in the Facebook community. We see it. We see these mastermind events, which I think are probably the top three great things we've done at all time at House Call Pro. We also did something extraordinary. I don't know if you ever saw this, Mark, during COVID when it first set in, is that we started doing these nightly broadcasts. And I think in the legend of our business, the legacy of our business, the thing we may end up being most proud of is what we did in service to our pro community during the onset of COVID. Why? Because the whole world froze up. I mean, literally just it seized up and everyone was panicked and afraid, trying to figure out, oh my God, what do we do now? The world is changing around us. We've never seen anything like this in a hundred years. So we took 20 people. And at that time, we were probably about 180 employees total. We took 20 people out of the jobs they were doing and said, okay, we are going to do a nightly broadcast. And we are going to try to explain all these government programs, how the world is changing how they can get help and try to bring it down in simple terms and point our pros at how to get unstuck and get back in the fight. And we had guests come in like Mark Cuban came and spoke with us on that show. We had guys like Jocko Wilnick, who our pros love, rightfully so, come and cheer for them, explain to them how to get back in the fight, how to get a plan A, a plan B, a plan C. We did that for six months, every night of the week, and just helping our pros get off the kind of place they were stuck and get back in the fight and start taking care of their families, taking care of their employees and growing again. And then sure enough, the tailwinds of all those humans going home and abusing their plumbing and their HVAC <laughs> yes. and need to go fix their houses up, they all sort of catch a tailwind and boom, the whole thing took off. 
And that ended up being this magical state. We did it for the right reasons to help our pros. They caught the tail- tailwind and off they've gone for the last year and a half ever since. Yeah. I didn't even think of that. Of course, everybody's home more, so everything's being used, oh, you know, 10x. Everybody's breaking, right. Yeah. And then no one is, you know, how much are we spending money? So they're spending money on improving their home, and that's been really good for the right. home service business. Yeah, it's absolutely blossomed. So were those Facebook Live presentations or? We did. Every night, I think it was, if I remember, it was like five o'clock for half an hour to an hour. We did a live broadcast, our head of people and Roland, who's famous as one of our co-founders and is really the face of our business in so many ways. He's deeply ingrained in that community. He led the broadcast and Alexa, who's on his team on the innovation side, the three of them led that on every night. They were nice enough to let me in there every so often to speak with some of these pros. It was their show. And man, I'll tell you, like, again, legend of our business. It will go down as one of the most remarkable things we've ever accomplished. And it really just speaks to who we are. And it was live. You're getting Q&A because it was live. So they can input and ask questions and stuff like that. That's fantastic. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Do they have to be a house call pro member to get into your Facebook group? No, I think that's the beauty of it is that we want to make it agnostic. As long as you're not in there trying to sell your other your wares to that community, you really make it about honoring one another, serving one another, trying to get to the higher good, the higher plane. As long as you participate that with some goodwill, we want it to be open to anybody who's in the pro world who wants to come in and have a peer-to-peer support group and consultancy and then also get some help from us now and then too. That's fantastic. Admirable. So they just go into Facebook and search House Call Pro and find your group? Yeah, you'll go find it in our pro. And then we have a super group community. We have a lady pro community. Like, it's incredible. There's so many women. Oh, nice. If you want to know who the real power is in this world, who gets stuff done in this world, (laughs) go look at the owner. And she is probably the one driving the machine along with her husband, an equal kind of pilot profile cease, right? But at the same time, we realized I was underserved audience out there that really hasn't gotten the recognition or the support that they may need. Because look, our community is trying to deal with being a parent, trying to be run a small business, which is no small feat separately and then together. So yeah. we have a lady pro community as well. So we have all these different sort of subgroups we've also developed over time and they've blossomed as well. But And in the aggregate, it's just this incredible sense of community and service to our bros. Yeah, well, that's fantastic. And more and more women getting into the trade. So that's great to see. And great to see your... Look, I've got three daughters, Mark. Nothing would make me happier than trying to engineer their way of going in and starting a HVAC business, a plumbing business, you name it. There are just incredible business opportunities in this space where we, there's more demand than there is supply. Yep. So why not go into that business space? My wife and I would be incredibly fortunate. We got one of our daughters to start a business. I started with them if I could and get them on that path. They're all still just young enough that they can still go down that path they want to. And I hope they do. There you go. Yeah. And the trades are safe. And now they pay well and they're safe from robotics and artificial intelligence and software replacing you. In fact, software, as you say, is helping them grow their business and work less, work smarter. Yes, sir. Dispatch and all that. So how about price book? Is that built into your system? I've noticed that so many pros have trouble putting together a price book, of course, pricing their services properly. So do you help them in that respect? Is there a price book built in or can they build that? It's a timely question. We just launched in September our visual price book and enabling flat rate pricing. And we'll soon have partnerships with other content providers that you can bring in their price book as well into the platform. Nice. If building your own price book, that's no walk in the park, right? If you think about 700 to 4,000 rows of information on materials and service, it's not an easy thing to build. And so we built the platform in a very intuitive way, what is often a complex process. And now we're building the content components in to complement that. And we want to bring in the whole winning plan. Because again, if you can understand your pricing and understand how to drive margin, not just top line, but how do you drive margin in your business? Margin, right. That's how you grow a great business. And so we spent six months with one of our team just building out this offering and making it world-class. We just shipped it in the last 30 days. I think it's about 600 customers already turned that on or starting to use it. And we think that number will triple here pretty quickly as we start to get the price books in there to complement the feature itself. So yeah, it's critical for, particularly in the mechanical trades, Super helpful on that front. That's fantastic. Super helpful. Yeah. And so many pros do not price themselves right. And so it doesn't matter how hard they work, how much marketing or advertising they're doing, they're not making the right margin. So is there a possibility of buying or downloading a generic or templated price book for a particular industry? There are, shortly. I won't tell you who we're partnering with initially and the path we're on, but we should have one or two options here shortly. So you can subscribe to a price book and just pull that in 
And then if you want to make any adjustments or customizations for your business, you can. And we also have other partners that we are bringing in their price books as well in different industries. So there are catalogs. We can also bring that in also. So you can have the images. So you have a line item in the right description. So again, you can build out a world-class price book that not only is visually pleasing for the customer, that is intuitive for your techs out there in the field to populate an estimate or a proposal. It also makes sense from your business perspective and driving revenue and margin. That's nice. Of course, integrate with uh, presentation, good, better, best. Yes, sir. That's exactly right. It feeds into those estimates, which essentially you put four estimates together. You now have a good, better, better, best sales proposal, which is also one of the features we have in our system. Yeah, that's fantastic. Wow. I didn't know that. So I didn't I didn't set you up for that. Yeah, no, it's a timely <laughs> question. I love that you asked. It's a good tee up on that side. And really, we're proud of the work that yeah. our engineering team is on that front. How about recurring revenue? So I'd like to get all of our pros onto recurring revenue as quickly as possible. So does your system set up for like uh, service agreements, VIP clubs, those kinds of things? It does. Let me just take a step back and speak to what you're speaking to, which is, sure. I've got a subscription to damn near everything these days. Like if I look at the list of things I'm subscribed to, it's longer than my arm. It's insane in that list. Why? Because it's a lot more convenient to pay 12 bucks a month than it is to pay 144, 150, 160, 180 bucks a year. If you can break up those service agreements, there's a couple of benefits into a membership is that one, it becomes recurring revenue for you as a pro and you've now Netflixized essentially your business, right? You've created a subscription model for your business, which is great for your business. And two, well, two, three. The second thing is it's incredibly convenient for your customer. And what we've seen and really HVAC leads the way, but we think it's applicable to everyone that should be back in that home once or twice a year. And so what is the usual customer experience, right? I'll talk about my wife here in our household. The heating breaks doesn't go on when it's supposed to, hot air or cold air. That's about as much as either one of us know about what should or shouldn't happen in our home. And so what do we do? We either go call a person we know who was in our house three months ago servicing that unit because they're top of mind. We know that we're back in the house once or twice a year. Or I go to Yelp or I go somewhere else on Google and I look up HVAC. Like somebody go fix my air. And I start working my way down the list, calling every pro until I get somebody to respond, come out and do an estimate, come out and <laughs> fix that damn thing. Right? So which one is better for the pro? That's like night and day, right? I want to be in that home once or twice a year. I want to be top of mind when that thing breaks. I don't want to be top of mind when Mrs. Pettis is talking about her great HVAC provider to her friends or her mom's groups, right? That's like exactly. the ultimate model from heaven is getting those mom's groups to have them talking about your business. Well, how do you do that? The service agreement. Get back in that house once or twice a year, proactively doing that 12 to 20 point checklist and being top of mind. Exactly. So you get recurring revenue, you're top of mind, and they give a chance for that customer to go promote you to their friends and family. That's just like mana from heaven. So the service agreement is just like you alluded to, Mark. It's the backbone of running a lifetime value relationship out with that customer. And so to answer your question specifically, we have great service agreements. We're now investing in building in the membership component of it too. So that when that sales proposal out, I can say, hey, and my better best option, if you sign up for the membership, we'll charge you $12 a month or you can pay for it quarterly or annually, whatever you want. And then we'll discount today's job by X as well. Nice. And so the layer of an investment in the membership component to complement our already really great service agreement offer, that's coming here in the next few months as well. That's beautiful. Yeah, staying connected is everything. You did all this work. You spent all this money to acquire that customer. You did the work. You did great work. Hopefully, you asked for a review afterwards. So let's talk about that, I guess. Yes. So reputation management, how do you integrate with that? So my mantra is obsess around your customer and deliver a five-star experience. I've been on so many sales calls with my teams over the years, and I always ask the pro, what's your superpower? And when you're small, you're a one or two person shop. You say, well, I'm really good at the work. True, important. But again, go back to my statement about what my wife and I know about HVAC. Nothing. It works or it doesn't. I can't tell you if your work is good or bad as long as it goes on and turns off and supposed <laughs> to, right? That's it. Correct. Yeah. The smart pros figure out it's about a feeling. So if you want my wife to think that you would deliver a five-star experience, it isn't because you did something extraordinary in the quality of the work, it's because you made her feel safe in her home. It's because you communicated with her in a way that's convenient. It's because you let her know that you're 25 minutes out, you're going to be there at that home so she can scoot home from whatever errands that she was doing or work that she was doing or pick up the kids. She can get home and meet you and she feels like you convenienced her, not inconvenienced her. To make her life great, 
then where, you know, put on booties when you walk into our house, speak to her and say, Mrs. Pettis, or yes, ma'am, like, just be polite and thoughtful. That's what great companies do. I agree. And that's how they deliver the five-star experience because Mrs. Pettis feels safe and secure in her own home, first and foremost. And second, she feels like you're honoring her and respecting her. You deliver that consistently. You deliver a five-star experience. And again, not only will she use that House Call Pro rating and give you the five-star experience, she'll go out and tell everybody in her mom's group, people at the church, or she'll tell everybody who wants to know about what a great experience is because it's so rare in this world. It is so rare. That is the magic. It is so rare. So we help on that front. We give the tools to set that pro up for success, deliver the five-star experience, and then give their customer a way to rate them and push that out to Google and to Yelp and other places. Nice, nice. Too many businesses believe that doing the great work is the five-star experience. Yeah. And you're absolutely right. The client more than likely just knows it works or it doesn't. Yes, sir. It's all those little things, how you interacted with the client, how clean you were, how polite you were, all those things. Where did you park your truck? How courteous were you? Did you follow up? Did you make the pricing clear? Did you give options and so on? And look, again, when I ask that superpower question to those bigger shops, yeah. they don't ever say a word about the work itself. Uh -huh. They always say, I obsess around taking care of the customer. I always deliver that five-star experience. And man, that's why they're big. They figured out that that is the magical part of the deal. That is. And we want to make sure that they have a good mechanism in that operating system to manage their reputation and to give that feedback loop and get into play and leverage it. Because look, if you get to, I think it's 47 reviews and they're at 4.78 or better, you're in the sweet spot of how you go find the next customer and that next opportunity for yourself. Absolutely agree. So your system sends an email or after the job or yes, sir. saying, please review us on, and maybe they can put in wherever, the Yelp or Google or... That's right. They can provide the review. They can distribute it out to different platforms so it gets amplified on your own website and out to other sources where, what we know, 92% of customers will stop and look at reviews and make their decision on reviews. Even if my somebody, one of her girlfriends or best friends recommended Mark's H back to her, it doesn't matter. She's still going to go check the reviews just to be sure. Why? Because she's letting a stranger into her house. Right. You cannot get past that idea. Whether it's me at home, whether it's her at home, you are letting an unknown person into your home to do work and often when you're at home alone. It's a big deal for most humans You're right. to open up their home, right? And so they're going to want to go check that review. They're going to want to make sure they have a good reputation. They're going to want to make sure they're going to take care of that relationship and that opportunity as if it was them doing the work themselves. So yeah, that's a big part of the deal. And so we want to make sure that they can go out there and tell their story on reviews and that when people are searching for that person to do the HVAC work or plumbing or home cleaning or carpet cleaning, that they can find a good, reputable, reputable pro out there. Yeah, that's awesome. Do you guys have any uh, statistics? Like, so before using House Call Pro, they got X amount of reviews per whatever, you know, 10 jobs. And then after House Call Pro, the increase on getting reviews per every 10 jobs. Yeah, that's a good question. Usually it's a binary kind of decision. They, they know and understand reputation management. They understand that they should deliver the five-star experience and then measure it. Or they don't. And so usually they say, got in their Google My Business page, for example, what most pros that are smaller are building the systems for their business, they'll have pictures of their warehouse that are in there by default. They'll have no information. They'll have no reviews. Right. So often in the conversation, we'll just start there and say, hey, let's go look at your Google My Business page together. Like, my what? Like, well, you know that most customers are going to stop and look. They're going to search Mark's HVAC. And they're going to look and see what that information tells them before they call you or send you an email. Do you know that? Like, didn't know that. And we say, okay, let's go work on that real estate together. Let's get some pictures of you and your team proudly, neatly dressed, sitting in front of your vans. Yes. Ready to go do the work. Let them see who you are. Let them see it's a family business, that you're a wife, husband team, that your kids are in the business with you, that you've got all these you know, great technicians out there. Whatever it may be, present great pictures that tell your story, that invite Mr. and Mrs. Pettison to come work with you, right? So start with the pictures. Exactly. The next thing you see are reviews. So let's go work on getting reviews into your business as well. And so we work on that part of it. And that's where the reputation management comes into play. Then we do some coaching with them on other content they could use to tell that story. And when they start to put all those together, and you know that 92% of customers are going to stop and check reviews or they make the decision, then now you have opportunity plus win and they get to success. And so it's an easy place to start a conversation around why you should care about the feature because of what it actually delivers in terms of value to you as a service pro. Exactly. And you get that customer, when that phone rings, that customer already somewhat knows, likes, and trusts your company. Yes, sir. 
That's right. Whereas if you didn't have any of that, they're still a little leery, maybe still shopping around or whatever have you. Picture tells a thousand words. When they can see that picture of your team and you as a wife, husband operating group, it just makes it feel like I trust Mark's HVAC. I love the story he's telling me. I can ask a couple of questions about it, get my answers like, okay, I'm good to go. I'd love to have you come over tomorrow at two o'clock and fix the stuff that's broken. Exactly. Exactly. Awesome system. On the thread of staying connected to existing customers, you mentioned earlier that your system does some marketing. So email marketing or integrating with, so we can send out a newsletter to the, do you guys work with the pros on that at all? Yes and no. So what we think about is the drip component of it, either it's the text notification. You can all set up email drips to notify that I'm going to be out there tomorrow. I'll be out there on Monday at 5 p.m. So the communication path before the job, then once you have that customer, you may want to send out postcards every now and then. I mean, I know that sounds old school as hell, but I'll tell you what, postcards? No, it still works. Man, it works. You bet. And in fact, more so in the digital noise where my inbox yeah, it does. has never been cleaned out, well, mine is, but most people don't clean their inboxes out because they live by text. So really, if you can send an old old school world of a postcard that says, hey, you know, we haven't been back in your house in six months, we'd love to come out and clean your carpets. That's really powerful. So we enable postcard marketing and drip marketing out there that I want to send a, you know, a reminder that every three months we'll send a drip email to all my customers that came in the last year. So I can go nurture them along the way as well. That's beautiful. The marketing of a blast email is a specialized service that does that that you can also integrate it. Like an Aweber or something? Yeah, exactly right. Gotcha. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of science that goes in that. And you integrate with that? Yes, sir. We do have options on that front. Gotcha. So the drip campaign, it sounds like I can set that up ahead of time and then it automates. That's right. Set it. As the old Ronco argument statement would go, they like the set it and forget it, right? And that's the idea. Set it and forget it. Set it and forget it. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. I see efficiency. No more probably duplicating data input in all these different systems, my accounting system, my email system whatever have you, and increase of sales in the field because we've got good, better, better, best. Yes, sir. You had four of them. Could you throw that at me again? So, Because I'm a good, better, best guy. And Good, better, better, best. Statistically, we found that good, better, better, best wins you more jobs in the better, best category than good, better, best will win you. You'll get an incremental benefit of average ticket size using a good, better, better, best model. So four options where you typically are trying to marry them to the middle two probabilistically, you're likely to get them in the middle too, versus just having one option in the middle because it tends to be too extreme on either side. So it turns out that you get a little bit better on average ticket size. And if you add it up over total jobs in the year, yeah, you know, so those little wins are add up to more margin for your business and healthier relationship with your customer overall. Look, customers want choice. They want to be empowered with choice. So give them four options, not three. They'll do even better. So to your question, like pros come to us because they're thinking, man, I can't live in this pen and paper world anymore. Look, two thirds of the customers are still coming from pen and paper day. It's not like coming off of their system. Yeah, I bet. And they're the ones who want to come to us and save time. They want to get their nights back from sending out invoices. They want to get their weekends back to go see their kids play baseball or softball. And so they want to get a little bit of time back. And so they come to us to save time. And what they realize is if they're coming off pen and paper, they're probably going to grow 30% plus in that first year coming off pen and paper by using a system like ours. So it isn't just saving time, which is a big win. They can make it an end statement. They can say, I can save a bunch of time, get some hours back in my life, and I can actually increase my opportunity to grow the business because of my communication, because of the repeat customer, because of those service agreements, because of reputation management, all these other things, they contribute to it just a crow and pie for them. And that's a big win. Yeah. Hey, it sounds like a big win for the employees, for the team as well. Dispatch is getting right to the driver. Everybody in the loop, accounting, bookkeeping, everybody has an easier job because everything's integrated. If we've done our job, that should be the outcome. That, that everybody looks forward to using it. If I'm an owner operator, well, I am everybody. But if I'm a five to 10 person shop, I've got techs and I may even have a dispatcher and I've got an accountant or a bookkeeper. And so I want each of those specialized skills, those people to be set up for success. And so our software should serve each of their needs to make their job more efficient, more productive. Look, I use this operative word, just systems. Like I am obsessed around building systems as an operator. What is these pros gain in sophistication? They tend to start putting systems in place. They may not even know they're doing it. They have a sales system. They have a tech performance system. They have a reputation management system. They have a bookkeeping system. And we'll coach them and guide them on how to use the software to get a more systematic approach. Why? Like it's a pretty simple equation. Like Mark, imagine you're the best plumber in your business. You know, I'll take you from HVAC. Now you're in plumbing. Okay, you have plumbing business. Okay, <laughs> you were the best plumber when you were an owner operator, and now you've hired five, six 
techs. One of the biggest challenges you face is how do I level up these five or six other humans to be at my gold standard of the work and care of that customer? And so that means you got to systematically get them in the door and up to your level of performance and maintain them at that level of performance. Well, you could put a good system in place of people in process and get to a measured outcome. And so what we want to do is give you the tools to level all those people up and get them to performance. You can do that through reporting. You can do that through the workflow. You can do it through checklists, which are inherent in the software too. Give you all of these tools to bring your other employees to your standards so you're always delivering that five-star experience back to the customer. And now you can see how it all comes together. That's beautiful. Yeah, I'm a big fan of standard operating procedures using checklists for that which allows them some leeway to make it their own as well. And of course, we always invite them, hey, if you can make it better, you can eliminate two steps in there or whatever, and we get the same or better end result. But yeah, checklist is how you take somebody from here and bring them up to where you want them to be. You make them confident in how to do it because they just may not know. And you can spend a bunch of time training them and trying to manage it. But if you can give them some training and then give them the tools to make it more obvious and intuitive for them, suddenly now they've gained confidence and competence, and suddenly they're acting like you at that gold standard. And that's what a system is. And so we just want to give those pros the tools to make sure that that's the case day in and day out. Yeah. Speaking of that, I saw on your website a mastermind group and a lot of video training. So I saw, like you were speaking earlier, your company is seriously invested in educating the pros out there. Can you talk a little bit about, I saw a few little things in your education services section. So Mastermind just looked like one of them. You already spoke about the Facebook uh, training. Maybe you could speak, touch on the Mastermind a little bit for us. I love that question. So again, we are a mission-driven company, helping these pros go from good to great, unlock their potential. Okay, we do that in a community that is just one way to connect with the pro in service to them. We've done these mastermind events, which I was really lucky to get to participate in. Again, Roland and his team of innovators, they're obsessed around the community, rightfully so. And they built these mastermind events that before COVID, we conducted, I think it was, you know, let's say eight to 10 of them around the country. Live events. Live events. We go in for a day into Las Vegas or Elks Club down in Dallas area or in Austin. And we just ran out of facility and usually about 250 to 300 pros would show up often with their teams to say, we want to just be smarter tomorrow than we are today. And our job was to say, hey, there are certain topics that we see come up all the time. Reputation management, marketing, hiring, employee retention. Like, how do I become a world-class manager? I would go and teach that one about about management, hiring management. These really important topics for the pro who's trying to acquire these skills. Again, like I'm the pro, I know how to do the work. I probably know how to take care of the customer, but all those other systems are a bit foreign to me. Educate me, teach me, help me get confidence. We go in and we do these mastermind events. They would pay a really small amount of money to participate in them. And we did them as a a way of just giving back to the pro and helping them be smarter tomorrow. And for the pro who wants to be better tomorrow than today, who has that mindset of growth, and they want to figure out how to get from X to Y, the least that we could do is go out and take a bunch of smart people we have, really passionate employees, and go run those shows. And man, they were unbelievable. I mean, talk about like getting religion. It was like bringing everybody inside the tent with you. It was incredible, Mark. And I always felt so privileged to do my small part. The team that delivered those events and the satisfaction like of the pros. There's a great picture I use in my backdrop of my LinkedIn profile. And it's from one of the events. I think it was from Las Vegas. And you just look at how crazy the crowd is, excited the crowd is, and leaning into it, Brown participating and it was like it was like being in the tent, man. It was an unbelievable day of learning and growth and appreciating one another. And you and I both know it isn't easy being a pro, right? You're out there in a hard scrabble world that most of our society, which is utter BS to me, but our society for 30 years has underinvested in technical education. Yeah. Our society has said for three decades now, yeah. all that matters is that college degree. Don't mind the $40,000 of debt you'll take on. Go get that software job. Go get that job in finance or healthcare. That's all good. That's a good option. But they're not the only option. My God, I mean, plumbers and HVAC out earn you and me both together. And so go into the trades. And we, our view is, let's go get people excited about going to my trades. Whether it's my daughters or whether it's somebody else's kids or somebody else's family or just themselves, go into the trades. And if our mastermind events can spark that idea of how to be successful there, how to recruit other people in the trades, 
how to get more people involved. And we've won on that front. And I, I'll tell you, what, that was one of the biggest wins we've ever had. And I give Roland this unbelievable kudos for coming up with the idea. And the way we execute it was remarkable. So like what we did during the COVID period, like we've done our community, our forums, those masterminds events or something. And we're about to, well, I'll just say we're thinking about get them rolling again, because they're just such a powerful idea. And it goes back to this idea, I think you got to this idea of coaching. There are these live events. That is one way that we could go out and coach people a few hundred at a time. Now we have this digital medium, which you can also append to that. So more people that may not be able to make it to Las Vegas or Dallas or to Atlanta, they can show up and they can participate online. But then we're also, and we're also starting to think about how can we provide these coaching forums for pros to build peer-to-peer and smaller group environments to support one another too, because people learn differently. They want to grow differently. One thing we've seen is that supporting one another week in, month in, and month out makes a big difference too. So that's another outlet we're thinking about. And again, it's all just in service to the community, all in service to the growth of these pros so that they can, again, take care of their families, their techs, and their community. Nice. The ones who are thirsty for knowledge. Yeah, we love those. But look, you're going to be a small business owner. You're not doing it because you want to reverse your way into it. You're doing it because you're kind of chasing after a dream and a vision. You bet. Right? Because it's hard. I mean, it's kind of hard. I mean, it is incredibly challenging to start and thrive in a small business. The odds are against you. So you have to have incredible courage to do that. We want to do everything we can to give these pros every advantage and be able to get up and to a point where they can suddenly have employees, where they start to really leverage their business and so on. So software is just the starting point of the deal. The operating system is just the entry point. It's about success and all these things we can do to support along the way. Education, even outside. So I did see, uh, peruse some of your video education series on that mastermind group. And I noticed you were teaching topics that really are not even about your software. You were helping, you were sincere. Hiring and managing people. Right. It's not about software. Right, exactly. <laughs> My hat's off to you for that. You truly uh, walk to walk. You are out there trying to help the pros create a better business and not just within the narrow framework of your own business. So that's pretty cool. It's about service to others. It's not about your own self-interest. Yeah. And again, that's our mission. That's the difference between us and a lot of other companies out there is that obsession around helping these pros succeed. I don't know how to explain how profound that is in our business. I mean, it's changed my life. Like I've always been, I have a couple superpowers, right? I'm good at some things and I could do them for damn near any business and help that business grow. And when I joined up with these founders and Ian and his obsession around helping the butchers of the world, he just had such a passion for it. It was contagious. And sure enough, it has changed my life. It has changed the way I think about success. It changed what I talk about at dinner with my family and our friends. And what I evangelize is that when you can have mission and success in the practice, your life your business, your satisfaction just grows exponentially. And that's what our company is and has, has really blossomed as a result of that. And it's what makes us so singular as a company. And I know you can hear, like, I, I'm an intense guy. I get all that stuff. No, that's fantastic. And I'm incredibly passionate about this. And so are my peers, like these founders, like they're still in there cranking 60 to 80 hours a week on the same one. Our CEO, who I've worked with for a dozen plus years now across a range of companies. He's as wired and wound up about this stuff as I am. <laughs> it's just who we are. It's infectious. I mean, all 800 plus employees have that same sense of idealism and purpose. And man, it is a powerful force. It is a powerful force. Well, the digital world has opened up the entire world to everybody, right? So competition is everywhere now. And so if you're going to separate yourself from all the competitors, no matter what business you're in, you best be in the business of serving your clientele, your prospects, and educating them like you're doing above and beyond your own business. I got to say the same for me. When I got into the agency business, we're in our fourth year now. Business changed for me also, and I'm a, an older guy now. Well, so uh, all other businesses, we were in the business of serving the client and all that. But when I got into the agency business and I'm helping these, for me, it's a plumber or electrician, and I watched them grow, then I got that. There's a feeling inside you get from helping somebody else succeed. I know what you mean. And that became contagious inside myself. I'm an older guy. I'm not looking to make millions of dollars. I'm quite content with my life the way it is. So right now, my greatest pleasure is in helping some of these companies go from two or three trucks to five or 10 trucks, go from working 80 hours a week down to 40 or 50, 
like you were saying, be able to go to the kids' ball game and the girls' dance recital or whatever have you. So it is life-changing. And the digital world was kind of responsible for that, I think. It opened up everything and you had to differentiate yourself. If you're just going to do business for the sake of doing business, there's a million guys out there who can do the same thing. So you have to show you care. You're a mercenary if you're just a hired gun. Yeah, exactly. If you had a purpose and mission, right, man, you are a force that can't be stopped. Yeah. And you have better impact. And people know it. I think they are pros... I'm probably not 201, all 22,000 companies and whatever it is, no close to 90,000 people using the system. Not all of them have that religion. Yet the vast majority, I think they have come to us and have stayed with us because they knew we have that profound care, that we really are aligned with them. We stand shoulder to shoulder with them in that fight, in that effort every day to succeed. And it's the difference between being a mercenary and having this purpose, this crusade mindset of how do we all get to success together? But you got to meet it. You can't just talk about it. You got to live and walk the walk every day. Yeah, absolutely. And that you're rippling out. So you just said, I think 22,000 customers, but 90,000 people using the software. So you're helping 22,000 businesses, but then they have whatever, 90, 100,000 employees and they have family. It ripples out. Next thing you know, you're affecting a half a million lives out there. Very big way. Yeah. Exactly right. And there's, you know, there's a million plus jobs, a lot more than that, actually, but a million plus jobs a month going through our system. Think how many of their customers they're touching and creating that five-star experience with all those customers. Like the multi, your point, your rippling effect, isn't trivial. Like it, it's a, it gets to be a big number. Yeah. That got goosebumps right here, Brooks. <laughs> and nothing else is going to give you that, right? Nothing in life will give you that, no matter what, no matter how much money you earn or things you collect. Nothing is going to touch you. Nothing is going to give you those goosebumps, like affecting. When I have a pro come to me or a friend and say, oh, my gosh, I just saw a house call pro in my receipt or the pro had it on their van or the pro coming to us and saying, man, this has changed my life. We have this Slack channel. We get feedback from the pros and we share with all of our employees. Excellent. And the stories, are, it'll just warm your heart. I can't get you out. Like the things that our pros say to us. Yeah. And that's when we know we're doing the right thing. We know we're winning and succeeding and thriving. When we get that feedback from the customer saying, it has changed my life. It does let me go see my kids dance recital or play a ball game. And my relationship with my significant other is a whole lot better too, because I don't argue about time. I don't argue about this stuff. Like if you like your wife and if your wife likes you, you want to have a system like this. I mean, I'm not saying it's going to solve all those things, but man, it has a market impact on your life when you get it right. And that's what you want to be a part of. Right? Yes. Yes. If you don't get along with your wife and kids, then don't get House Call Pro. But if you love your wife... <laughs> I'm not sure if you're a sales pitch, but it's not, it's, not, it's not wrong. Is there any myths about the industry at all that you'd like to shoot down uh, debunk, Brooks? Myths and debunk. Yeah, any myths about the... You mean about the field service management software side of the business? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that for a lot of people in our industry... Adopting technology is daunting. It's overwhelming to them. Like, look how long it took them to get on QuickBooks. It took it is. decades, Yep. right? And so we've seen a big wave of early adopters. But we're still just scratching the surface of the 2.3 million plus companies we think are out there in our addressable market. And I think that what I'd like to debunk is that pros think it's harder than it is to get off a pen and paper and adopt software, have an operating system like this, and I think it comes down to translating the intent to the will to drive behavior change. Look, if you want to quit smoking, you want to lose weight, you want to go to the gym more, those are changes that you have to go affect. I think for a lot of pros, they think it's as hard as that to adopt software. Well, I'll tell you what it isn't. And here's why. The software that we have is easy to use. I mean, above all else, we've made it as intuitive and simple to use for that pro who's out there fat thumbing and hair on fire all day long to succeed. So you make the software intuitive and two, just all the support we talked about earlier that helps that pro get success. We will walk with you hand in hand across the bridge, that old world to the new world. We'll get you there. You just have to say, I'm ready. I want to get going. Let's go. So I think what I would debunk is it isn't as hard as you think it is. And if you're worried about doing it yourself, you're going to have lots of support and help along the way from your peers, nice. from House Call Pro, from our support teams to get there. Because we want you to get to the new world. We want you to get to success. I think that's the biggest challenge. Because we see that because, you know, pros will come in, they'll sign up, and they just won't get going. Like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? Right. You knew you needed to. Your customers want you to. And yet you didn't 
get started. Why not? And really, it just comes down to willingness to adopt the software and make that behavioral change. And we just keep making it easier and easier and easier every day to get there. So that's the one thing. If I had to build a billboard, I'd say, it ain't as hard as you think it is. Right. Get going today. I like it. And that's probably the message I'd give them is that it may seem daunting. It really isn't. I agree. I agree completely. Yeah. And it is daunting. So it's this mythical thing. You don't know what it is. It's software. Most software is a little difficult to use. So Yeah. But they figured out how to use Facebook. My mom is 83 years old. Yeah. She kills it on Facebook, right? right? So, I mean, look, anybody can go learn to use software yes. if it's intuitive and you get the help when you put your hand up. And so this is really no different that if you put your hand up for help, we'll be there to catch you, to respond to you. And for those who are, it's easy, it's easy. They just get going. So there you go. I like it. Yeah, the education, the support is there. And they can jump on the Facebook group with you and get help from their peers as well, right? So there's the proof, uh, like uh, Joe from, you know, whatever. Canton, Ohio had that problem also. And here his information on how to overcome your problem or whatever. Yes, sir. Yeah, I love that. How about yourself, Brooks? How did you get involved with House Call Pro? It's a good question. Mike Bowden, who is our now, he was our chairman, now CEO of the business, is someone I've worked with across a few companies over the last 12 plus years. And we've worked together and I'm pretty good at acquiring customers and building systems and building high performing teams at scale. And we've had a great partnership. He was the co-founder of Home Advisor. So he's been in this business for 22 years in this industry space. He knows as well as any human being that walks the earth. And he's an unbelievable executive leader and good at particular set of things. You know, I've worked there a long time. And five years ago, I was on the East Coast and I'm, I was looking for a new company to go scale up. The one I was working with at the time just wasn't quite ready for scale. And that's my superpower. And he said, hey, go talk to these guys at House Call Pro, these founders. There's five of them. They're all tactical. They got a great mission. It's a big space. I know it's a big space. I've been operating in it for, you know, 17, 16 years. Go talk to them. And then I met Ian. And again, I said, I kind of go back to something we talked about already, Mark, is I can go build these acquisition engines and high-performing teams on damn near anything. Yet, have I really done that in my life with purpose? And I think that was the missing thing. I met Ian. I always tell the story, like in 15 minutes, I knew this was going to be the one. This company would be the one. This partnership would be the one because Ian had this obsessive mission around service to this unheralded group of people in America that are three, four percent of our GDP, and no one ever talks about their plumber or their house cleaner. They just don't. And he's like, that's BS. We should all be talking about them and celebrating them and honoring them. We're going to build software to help people like my dad and everybody else to do better. And that's all he talked about for an hour. And he is one of the smartest human beings I've ever met. Great human being, lovely human. And he was so impassioned around service to this group of people that I knew enough. And the story I always tell him is what I said. Mike probably got me halfway there. Ian got me the rest of the way there. But if I go back in my history, I didn't grow up in the trades, but I've done a lot of work in the trades. And the story I always tell is my dad had four sons and my dad donated our labor all over town for free. <laughs> and he believed in the work ethic. Yeah. And he believed that Saturdays were meant for service to a family and to other people. And God bless him. Every Saturday, he'd work along with us out there cutting grass, moving neighbors, painting somebody's house wow. for nothing. That's great. And he would work with us to teach us how to work hard as privileged as we were. So I grew up working hard. I grew up doing construction. I slung scaffolding on a crew. I knew what it was like to work on these small crews and to do the work with your hands. And I think it was kind of just touched something in my life that had been a constant theme. Ian's passion for the space, Mike's endorsement of it. And that's how I came to House Call Pro five years ago. And look, we were a little company. We were less than a couple million in revenue. We were 61 employees back then, as I said earlier. Wow. And we were just on this place of, we knew the customer loved the software. Now we want to go build a big system of, how do we go tell that story and bring those customers in the tent with us? And that's what we've done in the last five years. And we've had a good run at it. So it was a bit of history. And a bit of kismet. And that's how we end up here working together. And now we all get to work together every day. Because now Mike has joined as CEO because he's so darn good at scaling these businesses and making big and still staying true to our ethos, our philosophy around service to the pro. That's fantastic. Yeah. Confluence of the stars aligned perfectly. The stars align. Yeah, that's exactly right. I just feel privileged. Like I get to work with really smart, passionate people that we've done something that really matters in this world. Yeah. You're not just building a company, but building a company in service to yeah. this group of people that we love. And so lucky us, that's all I can say. Like we've been blessed and lucky us. I agree. And this group of people keeps our entire world operating. Yeah, it does. Right? Go drive down the highway between 6 and 9 a.m. 
and look how many trucks. Like, it's eye-opening. If you look on a highway, how many service trucks are all around there with Mark's Plumbing and Ian's HVAC and Susan's Carpet Cleaning Company? They are all around you. And to most people, they're invisible until you see it. Yeah. And when you realize like one in five of the vehicles on the road in those hours are service vehicles, you realize, oh, my gosh, that's how big this space really is. Yeah. Yeah. It's gigantic. Absolutely. And again, I love that it's protected from AI and robotics and all that. Even giant corporations, really, not moving into the space for the most part. So the mom and pop locally is protected and can thrive. And now technology can help them do that. Yeah, it can help them do better. But they're and they don't go anywhere, to your point. Like you just can't put a machine in to go fix no. the plumbing in your house. It's too arbitrary. There's too much randomness to it. So yeah, yeah, we're going to be around. It's going to be all driven by these one to five person companies predominantly. And then they get a little bit bigger, they get to 20, but they don't get much bigger than that. They tend to be small businesses. Yeah. That's the backbone of um, this part of the economy. Right. Even the bigger ones are like franchises, right? So uh, it still becomes a mom and pop anyway, sort of. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I kind of fell into the home service sort of by accident. When I started my agency, I went after dentists. I was looking for recession-proof industries because I thought we were due. But it was difficult to contact uh, dentists and accountants, which were my first two targets. And then I went after plumbers. And I used to be a plumber's helper in high school. And I did a lot of blue-collar work, little construction, little framing and stuff. And uh, man, as soon as I connected with that first plumber, I just knew that that was my spot. Yeah. That's amazing. These are the people I'm going to help, man. These are the people who keep the damn world running. Yeah. So, and then you're right. They are like sort of disrespected for the last 30 years, like you said. Yeah, it's a travesty. Like, it's just crazy. It is a travesty. That you're like a six, seven, eight hundred billion dollar impact out there in the country. And no one even looks at you and gives you the recognition you deserve yeah. for that hard work, for the contribution. Your home is your biggest investment. Yeah. These are the people that are making your home more valuable. And yet people don't see them. It's just like, I can't even understand it. Like, so once you know the value of the home service professional and the impact they have in your life, it does change everything. So not just my work at this company, it is having done the work and then working the company. That's the part that has given me that sense of purpose that I didn't have before. Yeah. And just as a business person. Yeah, me too. Good for you. I love hearing that. Me too. Accidental too. That's not where I was aiming it. So a happy accident. I love that. Indeed. Yeah, good for you. We're growing a little long. We're both a little wordy here. So <laughs> so <laughs> thanks. I appreciate the time. Uh, so if somebody is starting a home service company uh, right now, Brooks, what, what advice would you give them coming out of the gate? It may seem hard and overwhelming, yet if you can obsess around taking care of your customer and doing good quality work in that order, then get a system like House Call Pro as your partner and go run the 10-year race. We will increase the odds of you succeeding and thriving as long as you take care of those first two things. So that's around your customer, do great quality work, and you will win the long game. It will change your life. So by God, go out there and start those businesses or find someone to partner with and grow that business because you can create an incredible opportunity for your family, for those employees, and for your community if you do so. Yeah, you bet. I agree. A multi-generational business as well, you know. Absolutely. Fantastic. That's the best thing in the world. I see these two, third, second, and third generations. And a lot of times nowadays, we're seeing the daughters, just like I have mine, I wish they would, get into the trades and take on that family business and not just the sons. And that means there's more and more opportunity for it truly to be multi-generational over time. And we love that idea. I agree. I even had just a client just get his brother into the business. And now we set mm -hmm. his brother up as a separate location. We're, we're doing all the marketing, getting him going. And then like, I think we're four months in, he's already. Yeah. Well, once you get the systems, just repeating it in another market, or if you've got plumbing, add electrical, because you know how to run the business and take care of that customer. And look, you repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, because there's so much demand out there. So I agree. Do it right and get into it and off you go. Yeah. All right. Any question uh, I should have asked, but I didn't? No, I think, you know, you asked me the question, like, what would you tell your younger self? There you go. There was, that was my answer. Yeah. And uh, the billboard part of it. So I think that's really the, always a great wrap up question. And just I think that it, there's so much opportunity here. And I know it may seem daunting to go start your own company. Yet, if you get a good partner like House Call Pro, it makes it a whole lot easier. You'll gain more confidence. You'll have community to support you and you'll get there. So go figure out your plan. And look, anybody wants to you can call me. I mean, 
you can figure out how to get to me and I will spend time in my world of paying it for. Nice. For all the mentors and coaches and support I've had in my life and have helped me you know, be the blessed person I am, I will more than happy to help you. Like I have offered to hundreds of our pros to spend a Saturday morning with them, just giving them feedback and asking them questions about how to make their business better. So I will do that for damn near anybody if they're interested. So I love that. More importantly, we have a great team of hundreds of people who do the same thing. So That's fantastic. Mark, thanks for having me on the show. It's really fun. I appreciate it. Hey, Brooks, thank you. Where can our listeners connect with you, Brooks? How do they reach you? If they go into our chat, if they go into our website, just say, hey, but see, I heard the COO of the company on this show, and he said he would help me out and how to get started. Give me some time. And I I'll promise you, they'll get to me. I still take calls with customers more often than you can imagine, as do our founders as well. So I'll be there to help if I can. And more importantly, we have just unbelievable people who will help you get on the path that you want to be on. That's fantastic. There you go. You heard it, folks. Go to House Call Pro. Is it HouseCallPro.com, Brooks? HouseCallPro.com. And there's a little blue chat bubble down the bottom. You can always chat in if you heard me on the show and they'd like to connect. Brooks Pettis, the COO, sent me and I need to learn and grow my business. There you go. And I will cheer for you and I will coach you to get you on that path because it will change your life. So there you go. I love it. I love it. Brooks, thanks. That was a fantastic, great information for the audience. I appreciate that. My pleasure. Hang on just a sec. I'll close it out here. Thanks to our listeners for sharing your time with us. We know it's valuable. If you like what you heard, please rate, review, and subscribe to our podcast or our YouTube channel so you get notified of future episodes. Feel free to share this episode on your social channels. Good luck out there and create a great day. Thanks for listening to the Battle Plan Marketing Podcast. To power up your home service business, for show notes, visit Battle Plan Marketing slash podcast. If you enjoyed our show, please share it on social. Until next time.